Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we club. And I'm Pow. This is Joe Bart. And we are B-Pow. B-Pow Picks. So we took a break yesterday because sometimes things ourselves need to re-establish ourselves and kind of get free our heads. I didn't even look at, like, actually, that's not true. I watched the basketball game last night. But during the day, I didn't look at picks or nothing. I went off and playland in the world and <laughs> and uh, took a break that's something sometimes we need to do that but uh we were we're, we're going to be back to rocking again because we always do end up going back to rock and just we're not uh uh we're, we do have our human times where maybe sometimes the picks start to slide take a break get away from it uh if you are a person who likes to bet and you can't find your you find yourself not being able to take a break Something to think about there. There's a little bit of a red flag. Got to take a break every once in a while. Okay, boys and girls, uh, we are going to go into picks today. And guess what? It's Free Pick Friday. How are you feeling about that, Joe? Very good, very good. There's good matchups today, like I was saying beforehand, that affect the playoff um, seedings and stuff like that in some of these leagues. In the AL, a lot of stuff's more clinched where it's at. In the NL, everything is not so set in stone seeding-wise yet. So, uh, And it, and in some cases, particularly who's making it. So there's definitely some good uh, matchups that factor into that today in the uh, MLB. And then we, of course, have a Stanley Cup game this evening. And then the uh, Heat uh, series is back in action where Miami's been playing very well. So, Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but we were just talking about how the jazz keeps on getting the juice in that series. Very odd. Uh, but, uh, we'll go, we're, this is kind of a fady game, but we'll, we will talk, we talk about all the games. So we're going to talk about it anyways. Uh, Cardinals and Milwaukee Brewers. I find it to be a fady game. Don't you? Um, yeah, that's going to be a, uh, I would say probably because you have guys that you have an opener against a guy that um, is usually really good in Flaherty but hasn't been as sharp as you would hope. But uh, So I would probably fade it because um, the Brewers are certainly playing for uh, a little bit more to keep some of their hopes, to keep their hopes alive than the Cardinals who right now are in. But I would definitely fade that game, yeah. Yeah. Um, next game, though, um, did I – Again, this is free pick Friday, so I just wanted to know, see if we... I don't think we have a pick on this one, but Mets versus Washington, interesting game nonetheless. Yeah, the Mets versus Washington, I would definitely lean Washington because they got Scherzer against Porcello. I mean, this game really doesn't matter for either of these teams, so I don't know how long they're going to let Scherzer go because this game doesn't matter, um, but... Um, I would lean towards Washington. They still have better pitching a little bit. Um, as a whole, if they just kind of let guys piggyback a little bit to give certain guys opportunities here. Um, but this is a game I would lean towards Washington. It's probably not one of the best games to put money or anything into, though, because it's not like either of these teams is playing for anything right now. They're just kind of finishing their seasons out. Yeah, it's it's hard to predict which team's going to be playing for pride and all of those sort of things like that. Um, like you said, also you don't want to have overextend a pitcher that there's no need to overextend. Especially when they're an older pitcher, it's not like Scherzer's still 27 years old. The dude is uh, in his mid 30s now, and he's been a workhorse his entire career. So yeah. Maybe giving him a break, and then you're depending on bullpens and all kinds of stuff there. Not a big fan of that one either. Uh, Orioles versus Blue Jays. I know I like in this game. What do you like? Um, yeah, I would definitely lean uh, Blue Jays. Jorge Lopez is still not figured out the MLB yet. Taewon Walker's having a comeback season, and that's good for him. Uh, so I would definitely lean the Blue Jays there. Yeah, I like the fact, you know, they just clinched too, so they're kind of in a feel-good uh, place to uh, be able to win another one, keep the ball rolling. Uh, they have a good manager to keep them in that, and I, I imagine they want to keep that uh, uh, winning going into the playoffs as well. Lots, Still lots to play for. If the, With a good manager there to keep their heads in the right place, I could see them doing very well. Plus there's that... 
uh, I always forget his name because he's just coming up that uh, their catcher there what, hitting like freaking crazy right now. What's his name? Do you remember? The Chub- young- chubby dude. Oh, the young guy. Okay, okay. I didn't know if you met Danny Jansen or um, uh, Kirk, Alejandro Kirk. 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 Yeah. yeah, he's been fun to watch, eh? Holy smokes. Kind of a tubby dude, short, and just hitting like freaking crazy, man. It's almost like he's just out playing freaking ball with the boys. I, I just can't help but love him, man. <laughs> yeah, he's a fun guy to to watch, similar to Williams uh, Ostadio on uh, the Twins, but he's going to be better than Ostadio. He has a chance to be a catcher uh, in this league. You probably eventually uh, – lose maybe a little bit of pounds on on him but you know uh, so. <laughs> but uh yeah he has, chance, he has a chance to definitely uh, be a decent catcher in the league yeah the guy hadn't even played like over a ball i think or something man it's yeah just... either as our guy uh mark Hahn, who's played in philly here a couple games because of injury he didn't yeah. play above a ball and he had his first professional home run in the majors you got all these young guys this year due to the circumstances uh owning it in the league a little bit uh you got crockett um in uh baltimore just blowing it by people and i mean <laughs> that's been uh pretty fun to watch as well yeah and guerrero looks like he's turned the season around a bit too they've they've got a lot of bats there i mean i I wouldn't want to go into the playoffs against that team right now. I mean, their pitching could be de- needs a little more depth and stuff, but they're hitting. Oh my gosh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, Philadelphia Phillies, your Phillies, buddy, against the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, I would definitely lean Tampa because one is a former Philly. Usually, they pitch pretty good against us, um, and then you also have. Uh, Vince Velasquez, who is not one of our more consistent uh, pitchers going out there to uh, pitch in this game. So it just didn't end up being the best scenario for us. Uh, so I would definitely lean Tampa. I also misspoke. Uh, Crockett's killing it for the White Sox, which means he's going to pitch in the postseason as a 21-year-old. Uh, that's what I meant to say. I said the wrong team at first. But yeah. the dude's thrown over 100 miles per hour like 11 to 15. It was either 11 or 15 times already. So, uh, yeah, watch out for him. It's, t- it's funny how the mind works because I thought I heard you say White Sox. I didn't even hear you make the mistake. So uh, <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> okay, Rockies versus Diamondbacks. We got a pretty good play on this one, don't we? Uh, yeah. Um, we, we said that we thought it would be the over seven and a half because you got a youngster for the Rockies, um, still trying to figure out the league. Uh, he will be a good pitcher most likely, but he's just figuring out the league. Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of the way, um, it is. And then we have, um, Oh, also, and this is also in game. I think we forgot to say this is in game two, right? That we're doing this, uh, the um, oh, over yeah. because the over would be in game two, which is with Antonio Santos and Taylor Clark, not game one, because uh, game two has Santos, who's inexperienced, and Clark, who's a good pitcher, but gives up a few runs a game, where game one has, um, Antonio Sanzatella and Zach Gallen, who are two um, pitching like top two pitchers in a staff. So that game probably has a better chance to lean um, under compared to over. And then game two, definitely I would give the over in. I actually don't mind taking the D-backs in game one as well because of that. Uh, Gallen's pitching? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, he's a really good pitcher, yeah. Yeah, it, well, you're probably getting good juice on that. And, uh, again, the Rockies are going to let down right now. Uh, and Diamondbacks seem to be swinging the bat pretty freely. Uh, they got nothing to play for now, so there's no pressure on them and stuff like that. I, I, I have a feeling that the Diamondbacks are going to win that. So that's my lane. You can take that with what you wish. Uh, Marlins versus – okay, well, we basically just did – the back to back there. So Mar- Miami Marlins versus the Yankees. Yeah. Um 
This is going to be a fun game because Jay Happ was able to turn it around after starting bad, and good for him because he's, uh, I believe, coming up on his contract years. If he wants to keep pitching, uh, he'll be able to now find a job to be a veteran of a staff somewhere. Where Alcantara, Alcantara just keeps getting better and better. Um, yeah. So uh, this is a tough one to pick. I do... I would say I would lean um, the Marlins because the Yankees kind of got themselves more supplanted. The Marlins know they can still fall out. The Yankees aren't going to fall out of the postseason. So I would uh, lean towards the Marlins because they're playing for more. And plus, if it's if if I feel 50-50 about it, which I do, you might as well play for the one that you have a plus 175 money line going your way compared to a minus 200. Uh, so... Uh, that it's just better to go with the dog, like we said, in a 50-50 split. And the Marlins are playing for more right now than New York is. So, Yeah, I'm not really big on the game. The Yankees are getting a, bunch, a few people back from injury uh, and a um, few hitters back from injury as well. And uh, I kind of was leaning the under here, but both of these teams can just – can. Uh, can break out and, and they got some pretty good hitters. So we did say under first five. You could probably do yeah under Pat first five. And That's Alcantara, what it was. Yeah. Right. yeah, under first five. I did like the under. We did like the under first five on that one for sure. So that's not. That's probably the best play for that game. Um, Pirates versus the Indians. Uh, Pirates won seven nothing. Yes. That's maybe all the hitting they do the, for the rest of the season. Can yeah, the RL, like we said, will probably be good for that one with the Indians. And we also uh, said you could potentially um, pick um, – I was thinking – I wouldn't do it, though, because I see the over-under is only seven and a half because you have two good pitchers. I was going to say you could do an under in first five. That's probably only at like three and a half. So that would be a pretty tough uh, – under there, but I do like that pitching matchup. I think it'll hit the RL more because of the Pirates bullpen than the Pirates starter. Right. Uh, yeah, that's I like the RL there too. Just, Indians are hitting well. Um, and uh, the Pirates just, I mean, they had one one game where they decided to start hitting a little bit, but for the most part, they can't hit. So, it wouldn't have to be hot, that high of a score to uh, still be RL. Uh, Astros versus Rangers. Yeah. Um, I would still lean Astros because the Astros are the team, like I was saying before, they're the only team in the AL right now that does not have that X next to their name, uh, meaning they clinched their spot because – if they lose a couple straight, the Angels can catch up to them winning percentage uh, wise. Uh, so, because the Angels are the only one that's not eliminated, that's out of the playoffs. So, the Astros are playing for a heck of a lot more than the Rangers. The Rangers are playing to try to be spoilers. So, I would lean towards the Astros because they're still playing like this is a playoff game. And we know the Rangers aren't really a playoff team. So. The only thing about this game, I mean, I do lean uh, Houston as well, but if there's a team you want to spoil, the yeah. Astros are it, right? <laughs> After the cheating and everything that went on there, there could be some added uh, incentive to try to beat those guys down. So I'm a little fady on the game, to tell you the honest truth. Um, I, I had it on uh, – for the total, I have it on the under – um, but just because Houston hasn't been hit and uh, hasn't been hitting like crazy, the Rangers have a, not a bad pitcher in there. But I'm not super bullish about it at all. Detroit Tigers versus Kansas City Royals. It's a nothing game. How do you think that's going to go? Um. Yeah, you got Turnbull and Keller. Keller's a really good pitcher. Turnbull's really starting to make himself into a solid uh, three or four guy there. Um. I would lean maybe under first five for that game. Neither of these teams have consistent bullpens, so I, would, I wouldn't I would be too bullish to go towards their bullpens and be hung-ho on everything. Kansas City does have a couple guys, where Detroit only 
has one that's very consistent and then a couple other guys that pitch well in spurts. Um, so I would say under first five, if you're going to put a play, is probably the best uh, bet there in that game. Was that a doubleheader? No, way. No, okay. Uh, Cubs versus Chicago White Sox. We have a play on this. We like this play. Yeah, the Cubs and White Sox, we have under first five because you got Cease in there against Darvish, who uh, obviously is an NL Cy Young candidate, and then Dylan Cease has really been coming into his own this year for the White Sox, and this is going to be his biggest start. And I think that adrenaline uh, that is going to really help him pitch and um, match Darvish pretty well. So I think there's a good chance of this being under in the first five innings. It's definitely too uh, hung-ho of a game. Uh, The two teams in the postseason um, battling it out um, in the battle with Chicago. So I think uh, picking who's going to win is kind of hard in this one, especially because the White Sox have been struggling a bit recently and the Cubs really have not had a good second half. They just have been look good overall record-wise because of how great their first half was. So Yeah, I, that, and for that reason, I kind of lead the White Sox. But with the levity of the game and all of that, there's a lot of uh, tension that can change. It'll probably – it could be very back and forth. And, yeah, I'd probably fade that as well, but I do like that under first five for sure. That's a big pick. Uh, Cincinnati Reds versus Minnesota Twins. Yeah, the Reds and Twins game, um, that has Maley, who's really uh, impressed this year. Uh, good good for him. And then you got Barrios. Um I would say leaning under in that. The problem is it doesn't get good money because they're at 10 and a half. Uh, both of those guys have been pitching pretty good. Uh, if the under in first five gets bigger money than minus 225, then you could definitely go for that as well. Um, I was going to say, like I said in the pre. I was going to lean Reds in this one because they're playing for more than the Twins at this point who have clinched and kind of know where they're at. Uh, Melee, though, is pitching in the biggest game of his career. But if you have confidence in him, I would definitely be okay with putting a little bit up on the Reds because they're at a plus 130. You make pretty good money. The kid's been pitching really well. Otherwise, this is just the biggest game of his career going against Barrios, who has ace-level stuff. He just has have hasn't been able to put it fully into tune yet to have it all the time where Melee, this is his first great stretch run in the league. And that's, you know what? First five, that's uh, four and a half. Oh, that's interesting. Cause it 10 and a half, you would think would be okay. Yeah. I would still say that is a good chance though, with how those guys have been pitching. Usually What's ten and that? a half wouldn't be four and a half in the first five. It would be more like under five. But yeah, that that is that it, is it total ten and a half for that game? Yeah, that seems like an under all day, doesn't it? Yeah, the under just doesn't make you good money. That's why I was saying if you go under in the first five, either under five or under four and a half, uh, would be pretty decent plays because it would probably make more than a minus two twenty five line. It's not much better, but it's not a bad play. I like the under first. It's a, it's one sixty eight, so that's you're getting, you know, sixty eight bucks on a hundred hundred on that game, and I think that's pretty likely to happen with that pitching matchup. Uh, like you said, unless melee, you know, freezes in a big game there. That's the yeah, big that's the bigger thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just got to use the Super Smash Brothers melee cord, and then it'll be okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh Brewers versus Cardinals. Did we do the the first game of this one already? Um or is it a Brew Brewers? Crew and Cardinals, we didn't go through um either yet. The first one's the Flaherty and Suter game, which is hard to pick because Flaherty hasn't been as locked in recently and Suter's been pretty good when he opened uh, the Brewers are playing to keep their playoff hopes alive. So if you're going to bet on an underdog, I would say that's not the worst um, decision to do there um, and try to bet on the underdog uh, 
fair in the Brewers because they're playing for a lot more. Um, in game two of that series, you got Lindblom versus Ponce de Leon. Uh, so both of those guys, Lindblom coming from overseas, I think he'll figure it out. He's just taken maybe a year to adjust uh, back to the league and all that good stuff. Um that definitely probably has a chance to be a uh, over, but uh, on my app they haven't put it in yet because they haven't put the pitching match up. So um, that's not really fully in, in on mine yet uh, for the total. But if it's anywhere that's not like 10 and a half or 11, um, I would say it definitely has a chance to be an over if it's at 10, uh, 9.5, something along those lines in game two. But other than that, I wouldn't pick the sides in those games because I think those are going to be one and one, and I wouldn't be able to tell you which one I think is going to go either way. Yeah, I think it's going to um, be a split doubleheader. Yeah, which one's which one is which team gonna win? Yeah, exactly. That's why I, I wouldn't touch the uh, money line. I would just touch uh, over in the second game with Ponce de Leon and Limblum as long as the over's not at like ten and a half or eleven. Um, and then in game one, like I said, I would I would go uh, with the underdog and the Brewers because they're playing for more. Usually when Suter opens, uh, he does pretty well. And I think uh, they might have a good chance to win that game one, uh, which is why – actually, yeah, they probably have a better chance to win game one because they have the opener and Suter. If he can go three innings, they're going to use their bullpen a lot. Limblum would have to go deep in game two in order for them to um, – not have to use their bullpen a lot, which is less likely. So I would say game one is where you would want to bet Brewers. Yeah, and uh, actually I got six and a half for game two. That's what I have for now because it didn't put in the pitching matchup. Okay. Yeah. That's why yeah, it, it doesn't have on mine the pitching matchup. It just has the lines and stuff. Right. Okay, Seattle versus Oakland Athletics. Seattle's got nothing to play for. Oakland. Oakland's got Bassett on the mound too, who's pitching really well. Yeah, yeah. It feels like Oakland's got wants to get a win here for sure. They've been they had a tough time with the Dodgers there, right? Yeah, that unders at five and eight. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Do you got five and a half for that? That's got to be an over. <laughs> Yeah, it's under five and a half. You're not making anything on an over, though. It's at a minus 300. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe uh, can you, maybe adjust it if you can do it on your app to even six, ye- six and a half. Yeah, because this is five and a half. Uh, honestly, you would make a good amount of money if you bet nothing on the under and just hope somehow that game was three yeah, to two. Yeah, either that or you could throw it. I mean, it's almost – it's a nice – it could be a little added juice on a parlay to yeah. put it as the over there because it's almost like guaranteed money. I cannot see that being under six, uh, under five and a half. No, the game would have to be like three uh, to two because then you would only have five. So yeah, not likely or two to so, one. So angels versus Dodgers. I think this is going to be an absolute blowout. Uh, you, what do you think? Um, yeah, Kirsch is pitching really well. He needs a solid pitcher. I would lean towards the Dodgers for sure. The Angels, though, are still playing for stuff. The Dodgers clinched, so I doubt Kershaw's pitching a lot in this game. Because the Dodgers true. already clinched. Yeah, um, and the Angels haven't clinched or clinched elimination yet. Let's put it that way. So if the Astros lose and they keep winning, they still have a chance. So I would say there's a chance when there's a will, there's a way basically that the angels can win this game. It's just, I wouldn't necessarily put big money on it. If you want to add it to a parlay, because Heaney uh, is a guy that I've always liked. He just hasn't been able to fully put it together a lot due to a lot of being banged up. Um, But He's had a fairly solid season this year, 
a one and a half whip. He hasn't walked a lot of guys this year, and he has 67 strikeouts to 17 walks. So I would say there's a chance the Angels could win that game. They're playing for a lot more than the Dodgers. So yeah, I don't give him much of a chance. But you brought up a good point. He's probably not going to. They're probably not going to throw much with that arm in this game since there's nothing to uh, play for. Uh, back to back, Padres, Giants. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is obviously a far more important series for the Giants. I mean, it's not even close. The Giants have to stay where they're at in the seeding. If they could uh, sweep out the doubleheader, that would obviously be um, huge for them. Now, do I think they're going to do it? Probably not. They'll probably win one. But the Giants are one of the toughest teams to predict, though. I like their team. They got they, so many hitters, right? They've also been so up and down, and then they have those journeyman hitters that have just been so good this year. Yeah. Um, where that's why it's kind of tough to pick. Um, in the one game, I know, I think that's game one looking at Fox on here. They got Denson Lament. And then they have um, Tyler Anderson, it looks like, um, according to this, going for the Giants. That would give the Padres the far superior advantage of a pitching matchup. Lamette's been one of the best pitchers in baseball this year, especially the NL. Um, so uh, that was that's going to be pretty tough for the Giants. Um and then the Drays have Paddock, who's really good going in game two. Looking at my thing, I don't have anyone announced for the Giants in that game. Um, so they're going to need really good banded together pitching for San Francisco. This is games that I would probably stay away from. You can definitely hard lean Padres in that Anderson and um, Lamet matchup. But in game two, it's kind of tough. Uh, because I think they're going to win one of these games, uh, the Giants. It's just they're so unpredictable. They could win the game you least expect them to win and then get killed in game two. Um, or um, vice versa, if they do roll with Anderson. I'm surprised he's not a game two pitcher more than a game one pitcher, but that's what this is showing on here. Um, it, I, I just think uh, they have a, they're going to win one game. The Giants, I just can't peg which one it is. I would think it would be the one Lament does not pitch, but Chris Paddock is a hell of a pitcher too, and both of those guys do have their off days. So it kind of depends. They have to hope one of them has their off day. Yeah, I'm. For all the reasons you mentioned, I'm kind of I'm pretty much fading this. Um, uh, the Padres are happy to be in. They haven't been in, but. They haven't been in the playoffs for like 14 years. A long time. A long time. And uh, I just have a feeling they're going to have a little bit of a letdown here. I wouldn't even be surprised if Giants win them both, to tell you the honest truth. Their bats are just so strong when they're – but, I mean, it could go either way. Yeah, it's it's really difficult to pick anything on on that game. Uh, We did the Astros, Rangers, and Detroit Royals doubleheaders, right, The, the second games. Uh, we did the Astros and Rangers. Uh, Reg, we did. We did. Yeah, I think we did everything at this. We point. did everything now. Okay, well, that's our ML. Yeah, that's, uh, that's our MLB picks, my friends. Um, hopefully that helps you out. We got some pretty good leans in there. Some nice picks. Uh, if you go over to our Patreon, we put our picks in already for today, and uh, we're feeling confident as heck. Uh, I'd highly recommend you check it out. It's uh, uh, you go to the Download the Patreon app. Look for BPAL picks. We're the only one that's there. Uh, you can see, uh, get on there. You can you can see our record when you uh, on our page, and uh, um, lots of people are making money. So highly recommend it. Uh, we will now go talk about our. Ho- the, might as well go into the hockey pick for tonight as well. Did you want to talk about basketball for a bit too? Um, with basketball, I just find it interesting because the Heat keep figuring out ways to win. Why they're always Lower on the money line, though. I'm just cautious to throw money because I always thought this series, like, I thought it would go 
at least six games and possibly um, seven um, games where the, if the Heat win tonight, it obviously only goes five games. So that's why I'm a little bit weary. It's more just what I've seen from them because if they get the play they got from Hero, um, he was pump faking guys. He was driving more than usual. Um making shots we know jimmy butler's gonna come in and ball out um they easily could clinch tonight i would definitely say put small money on it don't go nuts on it but i think just because of what i really saw uh great play throughout from guys like hero but just outstanding play last game um if he can come in and have a fraction of that and butler plays the way butler always plays um, they're going to be in really good shape because Bam Adebayo has been having a heck of a playoffs too. Uh, th- th- they've just been looking good, the Heat. And um, I don't think that's going to stop tonight. It's just because of my previous gut feeling of it going at least six games, I'm a little bit tentative that the Celtics could have a little bit more bite left. But I would definitely, because of the money, give at least, at least a little bit of money to the Heat because Drogic's been balling out too and really stepping up in the playoffs uh, to help these other guys when even Duncan Robinson really struggled last game and Goran Drogic picked up slack. Well, now Duncan Robinson might ball out this game. and So, so like they just really always have guys that show up. So I would definitely be okay with giving small money to the heat i wouldn't give it a big money just because i always had the gut feeling it was going to go at least six from this get-go this would make it a five game series but if it goes five i see the heat having a better chance to make it go five than the celtics because the celtics have been fairly disappointing for some of this postseason they swept the sixers of course but beyond that they haven't been as peachy keen getting through the uh, playoffs as the roster would entail that they should. So. Yeah, you would have thought that they would have a uh, uh, much easier time than they have. Um, I, I kind of fade this one game particularly. Uh, whoever wins this game, I'll have a pr- like it would it would get like if if the Jazz can win this game, the Heat, you mean? Or sorry, the Heat can. Oh, why do I do that? Why do yeah. I keep on saying Jazz? Uh, it, he could win this. I, I don't know. It, it's a very tough game. But like you said, because of that, take the juice. Why not? Put a little bit on it and take the juice. Um, okay, now my my arena, primarily my biggest arena anyways, NHL hockey. Um, to me, with this series, it's kind of going the way I figured it probably would. I really I thought that Tampa – had uh, the player IQ, hockey IQ, to be able to uh, dissect the Dallas Stars. And uh, in Vegas, uh, it didn't appear that that was the case. In fact, it's funny that when Mon- when Pacioretty left Montreal, Bergevin let it slip out that he was concerned with Pacioretty's on-ice IQ as a leader. So <laughs> take that for what you want, but uh, I agree. And but in Tampa, you've got guys with huge hockey IQs, like Point and Kucherov. And you can say whatever you want about Kucherov's attitude. He's a brilliant mind, has a brilliant mind for the game. So does Point, and uh, so does Cooper. So I thought that they would figure them out, and they. It, to me, it looks like they have, and I haven't seen yet. Dallas being able to adjust to the fact that a team is not going to just throw it to the point and try to get tips in front of the net. Dallas did figure out how they're going to beat those teams all day, obviously. But Tampa is now playing a game where they're going uh, very back and forth in the offensive zone. Uh, put um, They're getting uh, Hudobin or whoever other goaltender to go in there. They'll have to go side to side. Um, but talking about goaltender what about the goaltender for Dallas in this game Joe what do you think yeah it's going to be interesting because I know Bishop has still been around and skating and doing stuff so if he could play I would think you're going to go to a veteran before you go to Adi now Adi is not a normal young goalie though you did throw him into a third period he did make a good save on the PK 
I mean, he went five for five in total saves uh, with not all of them just being routine. Um, I would say maybe for energy, you could go to Ottinger because you could provide some of that Thatcher Demko Vancouver esque energy yeah. to your team. Um, where I also think Ottinger has the talent to potentially do what Thatcher did in the terms of uh, he could probably save 37 of 40 shots potentially. He's that good of a kid where if you can then put in some goals, you're going to have a game where you're like, holy living hell, what the hell, where the hell did this dude come from? Um, So I think he has the potential and skill to do that. I just don't know if they are going to be able to have not the guts to do it, but the risk tactic to do it knowing this is as big of a game for them compared to going to a veteran like Bishop if he's healthy enough to play and then if you want to really have the change energy maybe Ottinger would be the backup tonight rather than Hudobin so if Bishop failed um, you would bring in Ottinger Um, so it would depend there but it was going to be interesting to see because I think the shakeup they have to do is in net at this point it's not because of Hudobin it's just even because they figured out the stars and Hudobin like we said isn't the best at going side to side um he's still he's definitely improved at it in the latter years of his career it seems but he's still not the best at it as we said and they figured that out you're gonna have to change it up with goaltenders here in order to kind of help try to solve them figuring you out in my opinion who they go to, I think you got a great young kid, and then I think you got a great veteran in Bishop. Just with Bishop, if he is banged up a bit, it showed in the one game I wouldn't put him in. I would try to hope putting in Ottinger gives you that Thatcher Demko-esque energy at that point then and try to roll with that because at this point, if they did figure you out, you don't really have much to lose either, and you're trying to just kind of put in a dude that's going to be able to instill energy, also is good at moving the puck as a young goaltender. So that can help you out a little bit since the defense is getting a little bit tentative more than we've seen in past series on Dallas uh, because they're getting uh, outworked in the zone a bit. So then they're getting tentative trying to go to the boards to play some pucks that they used to be very aggressive against. So having a goalie that will be moving the puck and QBing the defense a little bit more could help, uh, similar to a Bishop-type goaltender. So they go with either of them. They both play a similar style like that. Yeah, um, I think Ottinger would be the play, too, here for several reasons. For one, they're, it's going to, like you, you, you brought it up, it'll bring energy to the team. It'll also make sure they're paying attention to the defensive side of the game as well because they're going to want to win for that kid, right? Um I think that would be a really good play for him. I have a feeling, though, that he's going to still keep on going with Hudobin. I don't think that Hudobin is really bad back side to side. It's not really that as much as the team itself the system can't, get, can't seem to find a system where they don't clog up the middle and stop the puck it's the system that's in play that um and they should because they have defensemen that can move you know the mobile defensemen but um it's just got into their heads that they're going to play that bottle up the slot type game and when tampa starts to play a game that's pretty much outside and work their way in uh, Dallas doesn't seem to be able to adjust. So we'll see. They could adjust. They definitely could. They're certainly getting the juice tonight to come back and win that game. I just think I got I got Tampa all day. Uh, I think they're going to win. Uh, Stammer has been ruled on a fit to play officially. As people, yeah, and that was the other thing we didn't talk about. That he sh- he probably never should have been playing, and that took a lot of guts and leadership. And I think that energy is going to roll into this game as well. Well, boys and girls, we're getting long here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to watch this again, and I'm going to mark what each when each game is on, so you can watch what time it what, so they can watch what time it is each game is. Which, if you've watched to the end of this, you already know it and don't need it anyways. But oh well, <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. Um, thanks for joining us today. Free pick Friday, all free picks for you. Um, if you want our picks every single day. Patreon.com, BPAL picks. We have them there all the time for you. Uh, this has been Joe, 
Joe Bork. Uh, we are also part of a wonderful uh, community that's growing on a website called steelflyers.com. And uh, it is going to be an absolute amazing event where you're going to have live feeds and all your favorite writers are going to be writing for each team in of all the four major sports. And oh, it's fantastic. So can't wait till that comes up. Go check it now. It's pretty cool as it is. Not only that, Steel Flyers is, and his uh, his uh, wonderful wife do an awesome podcast on the on what's going on in the week and stuff like that. It's fantastic. She's she they do a great job together. That's our full forty two percent, boys and girls, for Joe Bork and Powell. We are B Powell. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.